Hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals. It's Monday, and we are carrying on in our study of the powerful book of Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 15. So we are looking at 15 today. I pray that we find lots of roses in the Word today together, and I hope that you are enjoying this series of the book of Acts and that you are learning more and more and more about the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the first church coming together in unity um, with the Holy Ghost as their guide and their leader. And so when he's the leader in your church, your church is going to be blessed. Um, When he's uh, able to orchestrate and do things in your church and he is Lord over everyone's life, then we're going to see some amazing things take place. So let's look at Acts chapter 15. It says, Certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised, After the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. What do we see? We're seeing now people that are coming up with their ways, their doctrine, and they're coming against the word of God. They're coming against the gospel going forth because they're trying to add their man-made additions, which doesn't work. In verse 2, it says, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain men of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So they're, they're having confusion and we know where confusion comes from. It comes from the enemy. So they, they brought this all out in front of the whole church and got, got the situation took care of. Verse 3, it says, Being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phineas and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And it caused great joy unto all the brethren. So people were still being saved, even though Satan was trying to bring some confusion and fussing and fighting. But because they came together through the Spirit and unified, everything went well. Verse 4, it says, When they had come to Jerusalem, they received of the church and of the apostles and elders and declared all the things that God had done through them and with them. And there arose certain of the sect of Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So they're going by the old law, the old ways. So the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter, and when there had been much disputing, much fussing, Peter rose up and said, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of God, the gospel, and believe. And we know he's talking about Cornelius. When we talked about Cornelius and his whole family being brought to the saving power of God because of the fact that God revealed to Peter that don't call something unclean that I've cleaned, you know. Don't say that I can't go to the Gentiles just as I've come to you, I'm going to go to them. So he's he's reciting this to them and reminding them. At verse 8 it says, And God, which knows the hearts, bear witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did to us. And he put no difference between us and them, purifying our hearts by faith. They didn't have to do all these requirements that some people were trying to place on them. He says, Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. It's just as simple as that. There's no other requirements. By grace are you saved through faith, not of works. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast, right? So we know that there's nothing we can do to be good enough. There's no rules and regulations or checklists as we have to do to be saved. It is as simple as saying, Lord, I need you. I I desire you. I know that you're able to save me by your mercy, by your grace. I believe that you died for me. I confess my sins, and I choose you as my Savior. I believe you died and rose again on the third day, um, and that you came to give me eternal life. It's just that simple. There's no rules and regulations or certain requirements to be saved. It's just coming to the Lord. Verse 12, it says, All the multitudes kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. So they they realized that what they were saying was true because the evidence was the miracles and the signs and wonders and people being brought to the Lord. So that was the proof that, that what they were saying was correct. If there's no proof behind what you're preaching, there's no evidence of miracles, signs, and wonders following you, then I have to question, are you are you really teaching the whole word of God? Are you doing the things that are pleasing to God? Are you glorifying men? Verse thirteen it says, And after they had held their peace James answered and said, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take them out um, a people for his name and to agree the words of the prophets as it is written. And he goes to the word. After this I will return and build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof and I'll set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
saith the Lord who does all these things. Know unto God that all these works from the beginning of the world. He says, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles have turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from the pollution of idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city of them preached that, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So he's saying we need to we need to teach them the, the ways of the gospel. We need to teach them the right ways, but we don't need to impose rituals that are unnecessary. Verse 22, it pleased the apostles and the elders that came together as a whole church to send out the chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Bersabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren, and they wrote the letters this manner. So they told every church, sent out these letters, what was going on, what they needed to do, what they didn't need to do, to come into agreement and, and be in one mind and one accord. And, it, and again, it says here at verse 24, For inasmuch as we've heard, certain went out from among you, troubled you with words, subverting souls, saying, You must be circumcised to keep the law to which we have gave no such commandment. So that was not a, a thing that had to be done. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you that our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that had hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning they had risked their lives for these things. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. So see, they not only sought the counsel, but they sought the Holy Ghost. For the answer. This is this should be for every church. When you have a problem, when you have a dispute, seek the Holy Ghost in his direction. He is our God. We should always seek him first. So they were dismissed at Antioch. You will say that and you can carry on there that they continued on together. They were rejoicing for the things that it took place. They were teaching and preaching the word of God with many others also. And as the second missionary journey begins, um, they were visiting their brethren, visiting those who needed the word of God. They were preaching the word of God, sharing the word of God. And as they were doing these things, God was blessing. At verse 40, it says that Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren of the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Sicily, confirming the churches, confirming, building up, edifying. This is what we're all to do in this time that we're in. We should be building up the church, not tearing it down. We should be edifying the body, not, not provoking it to anger. We should be doing the things that glorify God, and the Holy Spirit is the glorifier. He is the one who glorifies Jesus. If we're doing anything in our church and it doesn't glorify Jesus, we need to get rid of it. Because it doesn't need to be there. If it's not glorifying God, if it's not bringing glory and honor to Jesus, then we need to ask ourselves, why are we doing it? So these are some wonderful first steps that the, the church, the first church gave to us of, of some wonderful tips here of first coming together in unity, settling disputes among the body openly, taking care of these things so that it doesn't go outside the body and get blown out of proportion. And he also told us the most important requirement of any dispute or anything in our life is to first take it to the Holy Ghost and get direction and guidance from Him. He is the glorifier of Jesus Christ. And if we will seek Him first, He will be glorified in and through us. God bless you. I hope this word helps you today. Please like, please share, subscribe. We're adding to our, our subscribers and we're so thankful what God is doing. It's all the glory goes to God. And we're thankful to Him. We're thankful for you. Um, and we love you and we're praying for you and we'll see you soon.